it's your boy Nate. Oof. I'm the Christmas, I'm the Christmas present. I'm coming home, I'm the Christmas present. Hello, it's your boy Nate. I read books because reading is sexy, and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. Here with some book updates. We finished this just in time for the little chat that all the sexy booktubers are going to be having with Jalen. The Secret History, Donna Tart, my second reread. I, I did it. I did the, am I Instagrammable now? Am I for the people? Fun. A romp, still a classic. What hasn't been said about this? What I will say is the second time around, okay, I read this in one of my undergrad and enjoyed it lots at the ripe age of 18. And yeah, it was, it was a thrill, it was really fun. I missed a lot of things, <laughs> like the whole incest part. I don't, I don't think I, I think that like swept over my head for some reason, like I don't remember that part. I don't know why. I felt like in my first experience, the last half of the book kind of just like fell apart for me in that like, I, I I remember just falling asleep a lot. Don't ask me why. But this time around, I'm realizing that like, wasn't so bad, you know? All the melodramatics are there and they were fine. They're fine. Maybe, maybe a little too cringy actually when I think about it, but Henry as a character and the things that he does at the end, I'm, I don't know, it's just way too melodramatic for me that it was kind of cringe, but my little tween self didn't mind it so much. What I want to talk about is the first 200, 300 pages of this book still hit really nicely. Like it is the perfect fall book. It's about that transitory time when you move from high school to university and there's like this lonely cold feeling of entering September in a new space and meeting new people and just the isolated feeling of that. I, it's like you know when Harry Potter spends Christmases alone while everyone else you know goes back home and does whatever. Harry's just like by himself and yeah that's, that's the big feeling in terms of uh, just for the vibes in the first 200, 300 pages. Didn't realize how cringe it was in the end, but still fun. Uh, I still think it's a classic. Still hits pretty nicely from something that comes from 92, 1992. So, Secret History, Donna Tarr, did a reread. This is my, I believe, second reread of the year. And yeah, delicious. After that, I was just sick of big books and I'm still in the mil middle of Solenoid, which is massive. I, it's like good. It's just, there's just so much that happens in a single page that most of it does fly over my head. And it's also just like, there's just worlds within worlds in a single page that I, it's a lot to handle. Probably won't finish that until next year, to be honest. So yeah, only tiny books for the rest of the year. Uh, so I picked up Weight of the World, the tape journals of David Wanarovich. Yeah, finish this, delicious, absolutely exquisite. I wish that there was an audiobook of this and that you can sort of hear like the New York sounds and the sounds of his apartment. And um, I think somewhere in the foreword, it was mentioned that like, there was a man shuffling in the background during one of his tapings and it could have been the man that he was in love with here. Yeah, I think this hits really well if you are missing someone, if you are in love with someone, if you are lusting, if you just experienced loss, um, be it a friend that you cut off or any kind of loss. Gorgeous, I didn't expect it to hit me the way it did, but can I read the last page for you? It's just absolutely exquisite. And in moments like this, with the sky the way it is, just mountains in the distance, 
I'm sitting on the curve of the earth and watching the light slowly dissipate. A few silhouetted cactuses and a bunch of bees trying to drink some water that's sitting in a drinking fountain. A couple of them were jerks. They fell in and drowned, but I pulled a few out that were still struggling around. A few trees, just waving slowly. It's just a real gentle moment. I'm here by myself and I don't mind. I kind of wish it could just stay like this for maybe a few years or I just never moved out of the spot. I could just watch the light stay like this. And maybe somebody coming along and just putting their arms around me for just a few minutes. Yeah, I don't know, this, this man got my heart. He feels like a friend. Reading this feels like you're just sitting down with a friend and you're really hearing him out. And yeah, David a, has a, such a beautiful voice and he's so earnest and he has so much heart and you can see how enveloped he is in his world of art and the world that he created for himself in New York. Exquisite. Also, I wanted to talk about the idea of journals and sort of like published journals. Like there are these people that write these things meant only for themselves and then you know it's like posthumous that it gets published for the public what is that there's something like weird about it like evasive because it's completely private but also it's what you've always wanted to hear from like an artist or somebody like you want those deepest darkest secrets you want to hear all of the intimacy and yeah, maybe maybe that's why this hit so hard because it was incredibly intimate. There's that. Okay, and then we got another tiny book because tiny books till the end of December. I, I swear, I swear. Maud Martha by Gwendolyn Brooks about a little girl becoming a woman from Chicago to New York. And I'm just gonna leave it there at that because I'm almost done, and I think my thoughts now will be the same when I finish, but it's a, it's like a little dessert. I'm enjoying it. Gwendolyn Brooks, I know, I think she began as a poet as first. So it's very poetic and moves like poetry. It doesn't feel novelistic in any sense. You sort of get these chapters, which are fragments of this woman's life, and you put it together and it's like this collage of who Maud Martha is. Yeah, but it's like a very delicious dessert. Maud Martha. Also, shout out to Isolary Books. They sent me a book, a little cute book. I don't want to open it. Should I? Okay, I will. I first saw this book at Skylight Books in Los Feliz in LA. One of my favorite bookstores just because the selection is exquisite. I only picked up two. It was Conchway's Purple per Perelia and the, what is that? The Hans Ulrich Obrist interview with Gus someone, <laughs> a philosopher, I think, or an art critic. So thank you, Isolary Books, for sending me Street Cop by Robert Coover and Art Spiegelman. Oh, I thought there were more cartoons in here. Okay, there's some, there's some. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's a collaboration between these two. People got shot and died like they always did, but not always in that order. I don't know what this is about, but I like Art Spiegelman. My only knowledge of Art Spiegelman is Mouse, the trilogy, I think it is. I think there's three books. But yeah, changed my view of what history is and was. I remember being in like A Push and AP Euro and totally not understanding why I was learning about this and why these people did the things they do. But as soon as I read Moss, in the context of, you know, people in the form of animals, I real in cartoon version, I realized, oh shit, like this happened, this is this is history, and this like affects real people, even though all the characters are mice. And yeah, that changed 
my perception of what history was. I thought it was, I don't know, it was, just felt like so far removed from me. And I, not that I didn't believe or couldn't believe that these things happened, but I don't know. I just didn't care because I didn't realize that like it affected actual people. It kind of reminds me of when my AP Euro teacher talked about this one student who was kind of a troublemaker and like seeing all the pictures being black and white and stuff, he thought like that was history, that like long ago, everything was black and white, that life was black and white. And it wasn't until, you know, you hit a push 50s, 60s, 70s, or whatever it is, um, where things were transitioned to color and there was color. But yeah, he, for the longest time, he believed that like long ago, everything was just black. Life was black and white. Those are my book updates. It is so cold today. Did I already mention that? Fall is dead. Winter is here. I think I asked for it too quickly. No, I think I just asked for fall. <laughs> Winter is so cold. <laughs> It was so cold today. It is negative eight degrees Celsius or 23 degrees Fahrenheit. I already did that math for you. You're welcome. But yeah, it is so freaking cold today. Did I already talk about After Sun? It is a gorgeous movie with Paul Meskel, who's from Normal People. After Sun, please watch it. Incredible, beautiful, slow burn, will creep under your skin. Oof. I don't know how it did it, but it's just such a precious film and you need to go see it. After Sun, gorgeous. I watched The Wonder with Florence Pugh. Did I already talk about this too? I'm not sure. It was all right. I felt like it was all right. The film's fine. Like Florence is great. The little girl actress, she's phenomenal. I, yeah wonderful work and I thought like the beginning and end was very like I don't know too gimmicky it didn't really serve its purpose to be honest yeah too gimmicky but it was fine I think I I'm giving it a solid three stars because I've just like read about it like three or four times before Franz Kafka I think he's called the hunger artist has this exact same story as well as a push cart story from like 2014, 2015, it was a short story. I think it was called The Hunger or The Artist, something like that. And then third, I had to read something. I forgot what, but it was very much like this too, about like this idea of um, like the question of religion or science, the battle between it within a singular female body and what that means in terms of um, art and how art survives and how it cultivates, impresses, and sweeps man, uh, many different people into disbelief or skepticism. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, so I thought it was, I thought it was fine. I think I'm just kind of done with that because I've nitpicked it to death. So I have no interest in really talking about it anymore. And then, I, I, th I think it was two, three days ago, finished Young Royals season two. Oof, last episode was great. Hit all the notes, exactly what I wanted to hear. And yeah, there's gonna be a season three and I can't wait. That should be a doozy. Let me know if you've seen Young Royals and if you agree with what Wilhelm did. Let me know, slide into the DMs, would love to know. And yeah, curious to know, what book gives you the cozy vibes? Be well, do good work, keep in touch. Hi, if anybody cares, I just had this coat done. I bought it from a store and I was literally swimming in it. The sleeves were, I wanna say like a three or four inches longer and the bottom of the coat like nearly reached my feet so I was literally swimming in this coat but I just had it done um an odd thing I didn't realize about the coat is that it's very cocoony so when you outstretch your arms like this it gives like a bat wing effect which is I think what makes the sleeve so odd I didn't realize when I had them shortened so it looks really odd when I have like a bag over 
and it scrunches up very strangely, but I think this is fine. This is what you'll be seeing me in when I, when I get to New York. New York pals, this is it. I think it's fine. It's fine. I'm actually quite content with it. I, I just love this gray color, and I, I'm not quite sure if you can see it clearly, but it like has this like very interesting texture to it. Not bad, not bad. Hi, hello, we are on time, which means we are running late. On time is running late. This is the fit. Going to the city today, we got a mock neck because I think it's snowing in the morning, which is kind of frightening, too soon. This shirt that hopefully you'll see the details of later, and this blazer. Bag of the day, nothing written, doing the suede. Yeah, I think this, this does it. This is it. This is the fit. Book of the day, Night by Edna O'Brien, because it is December and tiny books only. Gotta keep that count up. Let's go. All my Goodreads buddies out there, get that count up. Tiny books, manga, poetry, now's the time. Good luck, everybody. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what's going on today. Pretty random. But hopefully go to Gangnam to catch out this exhibit. And then I want to check out the tambourine store and look at the new um, colognes available. So... Let's go. It's snowing. No. What's going on?
So we are we are stretching, you know, we are stretching the bills, making things last. But yeah, I literally cannot spend a single dime anymore. No Christmas presents for anybody. I'm the Christmas. I'm the Christmas present. I'm coming home. I'm the Christmas present. Yeah, cause oof, we we got a, a couple of expensive weeks coming through and my trip and I still have to buy a ticket to Atlanta and New York and I'm just like ugh yeah just a lot do I need to see people do I need to see my family do I love them enough <laughs> yeah anyway that's happening um we'll be home in January just like the holidays they come around I know they come around every single year but why is it that i never financially prepare myself for them i it's just like i'm so stupid Ugh. anyway that's where we're at right now in the world <laughs>